IBM Mainframer, a complete reference for mainframe programmer. Let us take a look at structure of JCL statements. JCL statements are all based on the 80 byte records, but only 72 of the 80 columns are available to code JCL because columns 73 through 80 are ignored by ZOS and are usually used for sequence numbers. That is, last 8 bytes columns are reserved for an optional sequence number. Let us see JCL statement syntax. Each JCL statement consists of 5 fields where we have an identification field, beginning in position 1, followed immediately by a name field, and this label, or name, is going to be the basis by which, we reference that particular statement. And again, this cannot have any spaces between the identification and the label fields. And then operation field, this will identify the particular type of statement that we have. And then the parameters, that are going to be associated with the values. And then after the first space is encountered, anything after that will be considered as comment. So, the general format of the JCL statement is displayed here. Let's see each fields in detail. First, identifier field or, identification field. In position 1 we identify a JCL statement as containing two forward slashes, and that is the basis, by which we recognize a JCL statement. Without the two slashes, any information is going to be simply interpreted as data, and as a result, depending on where it is placed or depending on how it is being used, would likely result in a syntax error. So, for most JCL statements, the identifier field occupies the first two character positions and must contain two forward slashes, slash slash. But, there are two exceptions. First, the delimiter statement has a forward slash in column 1 and an asterisk in column 2. Delimiter statement is used to indicate the end of data or transmittal records in the input stream. Second, the identifier field for a comment statement is three characters long, the first two columns contain forward slashes, and the third contains an asterisk. It is used for single line comment statement. Next field is name field, that follows immediately after the identification field. That is, if we have a need to reference, or to potentially identify a particular step, or a particular job in the JCL then we need to have the name field filled in. And this immediately follows the identification field. Name field must begin in column 3, right after the identifier field. It consists of 1 to 8 characters, which may be letters, numbers or national characters, hash, at, and dollar. Also, the first character of a name should be a letter or a national character. In this example, work Libra is the name field and it is length 9 characters. Name field should be 8 character length. So this is incorrect name field. Let's see another example. Here the name field begins with a numeric value. Hence we getting an error. So, we should always follow the naming standard to define the name fields. The operation field follows after that, which is used to identifying what type of JCL statement, we're dealing with. There are three important JCL statements. First, job statement, which serves to identify the particular unit of work. Then, we have an execute statement, that identifies the program that is going to be run. And then, we have a DD or a data definition statement, which identifies the individual input and output resources, that are going to be required for that particular program. All input files and all expected output files will be identified, using the DD statement. Parameter fields are going to enter next, and these parameter fields represent the values, that we want associated with a particular JCL statement. We have to code one or more parameters, that supply information that influences how the statement is processed. When a parameters field consists of more than one parameter, the individual parameters should be separated with commas. The parameters field begins at least one position after the end of the operation field, 
and can extend into column 71. But they cannot extend beyond column 71. For some cases, that you have more values that need to be entered, they can be continued onto a second line, and they end with a comma on the first statement, and then, continue prior to position 17 on the subsequent statements. So, all continued JCL statements must begin before column 17 on any continuation. There are two types of parameters available in JCL, first, positional parameter, and second, keyword parameter. We have separate video tutorial, here we explained each parameters in detail with examples. Check out this video description for link. Following the parameters field, you can code brief comments in the comments field. The comments field begins in the position after the space, that marks the end of the parameters field, and ends in column 71. MVS ignores what is coded in comment field, so you can record any comments you wish. You can also use an entire line as a comment. For this, you need to code two forward slashes and asterisks starting from column 1 of the JCL record. Let us see an example to understand better, what we discussed so far. This is a sample job card. First, you see the information required for the spooling of a job, where you want the job to go and run. Then there's a two forward slashes and asterisks statement. This is a comment statement. When you want to insert a space or a comment, prepend it with this. Here we added a comment this is sort JCL. Similarly you can add anything as your wish. Next is the step and the name of the program we want to execute. In this case, the step is my step and the program is sort. For sortin and sort2, those DD statements are the data definitions, and they spell out the input and output datasets that the sort job needs to run. Since the sort out DD dataset is new, we need to specify the details for it. The fields which we entered after the DD statements are parameters. As I said before, we have separate video tutorial where we explained each parameters in detail with examples. Check out this video description for the link. We also have a few DD statements down here, which tell Jess what to do with the output of the job itself. Sys in DD asterisk, this is the area where we send additional commands to the program. Here we added sort fields equals copy, that means telling ZOS to copy the data in sort and DD file into the sort to DD file. For example, maybe this sort program has a way of sorting things backwards or putting numbers before or after letters. Those might be parameters we would set in here. To mark the end of the sys and stream data, we use forward slash and asterisk. The last field in the JCL statement is comment field, after the first space is encountered in the JCL statement, anything after that will be considered as comment. Highlighted the comment part here for the understanding, now that's the basic structure of JCL. And if that made sense, you've got a good foundation to go much further. Thanks for watching this video. Hope you like it. For more details, please visit our website www.ibmmainframer.com.